The Eritropolis is not just a big area of farmland, and it should be preserved for farmland and for food uses, as far as I'm concerned. But it's also the highest point of land in the city. It's actually the airport is the highest point of land between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And as a result, it's the headwaters for streams that run in all four directions away from the airport. It's the headwaters for Sulphur Springs Creek, going into the Hamilton Harbor. It's the headwaters for 20 Mile Creek, going into Lake Ontario at Grimsby. It's the headwaters for the Welland River, which uh, flows all the way to the Niagara River. And it's the headwaters for Big Creek, which flows into the Grand River. So there's actually three conservation authorities that have jurisdiction over Aerotropolis land. And these four streams are basically flowing off in all directions from that site. So putting in an industrial business park there sounds like not a very wise idea. As it turns out, we actually have a little bit of experience with why it isn't a wise idea. We have an airport there. And the airport, as it turns out, has been contaminating these streams, uh, or at least the ones that it's directly reaching, for a number of years. So the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority since the late 1990s, you go and look at their annual reports, and every annual report they will talk about the fact that there's gly uh, propylene glycol de-icing fluids coming from the airport, going into the streams that the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority manages and oversees, and that it's contaminating those streams. And they've been trying to get the airport to stop doing that. And it's a back and forth sort of thing, and this uh, we'll, we'll try to do this, and maybe we can do that, and that sort of thing. But it's been going on for over a decade. And they came, actually, when this decision to make the air, put the Aerotropolis in place was before council, they came before council and said, we don't like what you're proposing here. The reason we don't like it is because this is contaminating our streams. After that decision, a new contaminant became apparent, and it's also coming from the airport. And this is this chemical, perfluorooctane sulfonate, PFOS. And it turns out that that PFOS contamination coming from our airport is perhaps the worst in the world. At least it's generating, it's creating fish that are the most contaminated in the world. So we look at Hamilton Harbor and it's not been pretty what's happened to Hamilton Harbor and what's happened to the water quality there because we had industrial development all along the shoreline. So it wouldn't be necessarily surprising if somebody came up to you and said, you know, Hamilton has the most contaminated carp in the world. It turns out that it does, but they're not in Hamilton Harbor. They're in a little rural lake, the Binbrook Reservoir, Lake Nyapenko, which is fed by the Welland River, and they're contaminated with PFOS, and they're the most contaminated carp with PFOS in the world, by far. So we've now had to put in place, the provincial government has changed the fishing rules and fishing guidelines, the sport fishing guidelines, and said don't eat the fish that are in this lake. At least don't eat the big ones. If you're eating the small ones, don't eat too many of them. So we've got a second contaminant flowing into the streams coming off this airport. This is coming from the fire suppression training pad that's been at the airport for many years. And now there's a lot of finger pointing going on as to who put it there. Did it happen when Transport Canada was running the airport? Did it happen when the city was running the airport? Has it happened since Tradeport International took over as the private operator of the airport? All of them are pointing fingers at the others and we're in the process of trying to figure that out. But we do have a mess. And that mess is also not just in the surface water flowing down the Welland River and into Lake Nyapenko, and it's been traced over 50 kilometers downstream, and that's as far as they've actually tested in the Welland River. But in addition to that, because we found that out, there was a bit more looking, and they found that there's something else in there as well. There's aircraft hydraulic fluids in those streams. And aircraft hydraulic fluids aren't coming from the fire suppression pad. They're coming from another part of the airport, as the de-icing fluids are coming from another part of the airport. So we've got three separate pollution instances, significant ones, of pollutants going into the streams flowing off the airport. Now we want to take the area around the airport and industrialize it. And it's the headwaters of four major streams. Literally, uh, at some level, we all live downstream of it not just in terms of what comes off the surface, but also what comes off the groundwater. And the PFOS is in the groundwater. Uh, how far it's gone in the groundwater isn't clear yet. That's being investigated.